All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We're talking about the Seattle Seahawks in tonight's video. Now, jokingly, earlier today, that sounds rude. It wasn't jokingly, but I threw out the Seattle Seahawks Super Bowl winning odds. I think it was plus 6,500. And the point really is how underrated this team is. And it, it kind of reminds me of two years ago when you just signed Geno Smith, you just brought Geno in, and everyone was predicting the Seattle Seahawks team to win like four or five football games. They end up winning nine, making the wild card round, and unfortunately, the defense just couldn't do enough to stop the San Francisco 49ers. Last year, even though Seattle still finished nine and eight, it was severely underwhelming, very underwhelming. The point is, to me, it was coaching issues, whether it was offense or defense or Pete Carroll, you know, coordinators, head coach, whatever it was, and health, specifically the offensive line. It couldn't give your running backs any opening lanes. It couldn't give your quarterback, Geno Smith, any time to throw the football. Um, it was just a mess. And Mike McDonald's getting the same roster but you not the same roster, but you get what I'm saying. So we're talking about the Seattle Seahawks in tonight's video. Shout out to BetUS for sponsoring this video. More on that in just a few minutes. Uh, but folks, hit that like button, hit that sub button for daily NFL content. If we could try and get this video to 100 likes, that would mean the absolute world to me. So I was reading a great article from Stacy Roast, and they were talking about Geno Smith, essentially, and they were bringing up some really good examples of, you know, Tua getting benched in Miami in 2020, and then the next season, or last season, he led the league in passing yards. Brock Purdy, the last pick in the draft, very successful quarterback. Jared Goff was once considered the weakest link on the Los Angeles Rams, and now he's, you know, an undisputed top 10 quarterback playing for the Detroit Lions. The point she was making is, getting in the right system, getting the right weapons, the right coach, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm thinking to myself, now you have the right coach. You've got a great offensive coordinator, in my opinion, or he's about to make that known across the league. You have a phenomenal defensive-oriented head coach in Mike McDonald. And I look at specific players, you know, Uchenna and Wosu, one of the most underrated defense players in the entire National Football League. Unfortunately, he is banged up. He's not on the IR, but I use him as a great example. I use Boye Maffey as a phenomenal example of what Mike McDonald can do. Boye is coming into his second year. Last season, he played 16 games, six passes defended, forced fumble, 52 total tackles, nine total sacks. And he's just, you know, another weapon on this front seven. You look at it, folks. Leonard Williams, Dremont Jones, Jaron Reed, new edition, Byron Murphy. All right, guys, before we get back into this video, if you are looking for a new book this football season, BetUS is going to be your answer. Check out my personalized link down below in the description. They're giving 125% sign-up bonus up to $2,000 on your first three deposits. Once again, it's the fastest payouts in the industry. Check it out, my link down below. But I'm going to show you something that we got an eye on here we're going to show you step by step. We're going to scroll here to football. We're going to go down to NFL divisions, a bunch of different options. Once again, they have just so many different live options, future options, just a bunch of freaking options. And we're going to divisions. And then we're going to see this NFC West winner. We're going to scroll all the way down here. Check this out. Seattle Seahawks plus 750. So once again, check out my personalized link down below. It's also going to be pinned in the comment section. But fastest payouts in the industry, 125% sign-up bonus up to $2,000 on first three deposits. This is what I'm going to be using for this upcoming season, and I think you guys should as well. But yeah, new linebackers, Jerome Baker, Tyrell Dodson, getting deeper, Trey Brown, Rayshon Jenkins, Julian Love, Reek Woolen, Devin Witherspoon. I look at this defense on paper, and I'm thinking this could be one of the best defensive squads in the National Football League, and a lot has to do with that existing talent, developing that existing talent, and being in the right scheme, i.e. Mike McDonald's defensive system. So my point is, defensively, I have zero concerns because I really think Mike McDonald obviously was or to me, it's obvious, was brought in here to fix the defense because the defense, outside of coaching issues, once again, offensive coordinator, defense coordinator, head coach, offensive line injuries, whatever the case was, or whatever the case you wanted to or think it was, is my point. None of the issues were roster wise. And I look at this defensive roster with young talent, 
with not even really aging talent. Maybe like Leonard Williams, oh, he's 30 years old. I think people think a defensive player or any NFL or any sporting player turns 30 years old and uh, he's about to be washed. I really think Mike McDonald is about to unlock guys like Matthew and Wosu, Byron Murphy, Leonard Williams, Jaron Reed, Jermont Jones moving, switching to the edge, right? Um, I'm really excited about this defense. I really am. And so if your only concern comes down to the offense, I just don't necessarily have that same belief because I'm thinking to myself specifically offensive line, whether it's Connor Williams, whether it's Abraham Lucas, whether it's Charles Cross, Lakin Tomlinson, I think is a consistent, reliable left guard for this team. Whether the week one starter is going to be Anthony Bradford or Christian Haynes, the rookie, that remains to be seen at the time of this recording. But the point is, you know, a lot of offensive lines coaching, a lot of offensive line is health. And if this O-line can stay healthy, I know you're going to get some type of Geno Smith season two years ago where he led this team to a 9-8 and eight record. He led the league in completion percentage just two ticks below 70% at 69.8. He threw 30 touchdowns, only 11 interceptions. He had 252 air yards per game, passing yards per game. Um... That's a Geno Smith I'm anticipating this upcoming season. Now, we'll save Ryan Grubb for a different day, but he was brought in for a very specific, very clear reason as to get this offense back on track. But just paper-wise, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, JSN, we can get deeper, Jake Bobo, Kenneth Walker, Zach Charbonnet, Noah Fant, extremely underrated. The offense has all the pieces. So Geno has been one of the actually most accurate passers in the NFL the last couple of seasons. But, you know, other than that, it hasn't been crazy. He's been 15th in yards and 17th in quarterback rating and touchdowns in the last two years combined. But my point just is Geno Smith is for, far from done. He's further from done. That doesn't make sense. But you get what I'm saying. 20 touchdowns, nine interceptions last season. He did miss a couple of games. 64.7% completion percentage, still threw for about 242 yards per game. While I don't think Geno Smith's the future franchise QB of this team, and he's probably not on the roster, although I do like Sam Howell. My point is the new coaching, whether it's head coach Mike McDonald or your new coordinators, they're going to make everything cleaner. And it's going to be more effective. It's going to be more efficient. And if that's the case, what it's going to boil down to, in my opinion, is the divisional record. Because the Rams are a very young team with an aging quarterback, Matt Stafford. I think San Francisco has had a bunch of offseason drama, a lot of just negative press that gets that locker room talk and gets the locker room a little bit uncomfortable. You know, is Brandon Ayuk gone? What do we really believe? Blah, blah, blah. My point is, I think San Francisco hit their peak last season. But Seattle last year was 2-4 and four in divisional games. If you even just win one of those games against the Los Angeles Rams, they should have won the second one. The first game, the opener was a mess. And if you can even win one against San Francisco, folks, if you flip that divisional record from two to four to four and two, I mean, we're talking about an 11 and 16. So, yeah, I mean, Seattle's got some difficult games on the roster, but I absolutely love the way it starts. You got a rookie QB week one in Bo Nix at home. Even a Bo Nix, I do think he's the truth. I think he's the future of the quarterback situation in Denver. Is week one on the road. That's a tough draw. Then you hit the road against New England, but they're starting Jacoby Brissett. And then things do get a little bit tougher. You know, you come back home against Miami. You hit the road against Detroit. Seattle's been great against Detroit in the last two seasons. But then you don't have San Francisco. You don't have a divisional opponent until week six. If Seattle can get off to one of these hot starts that they love to do and then maintain it, especially against divisional opponents, a 10-win season, an 11-win season, it really isn't that inconceivable. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button. Hit that sub button. Once again, shout out to BetUS for sponsoring this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. But guys, most importantly, if your life was on the line, Give me a win-loss prediction for the Seattle Seahawks down below because I know the NFL sleeping on them because they've been sleeping on you for the last couple of seasons. That's it.